Hey, I'm Aaron Syme, CEO and founder of WebRTC Ventures, here today to bring you another set of WebRTC tips. WebRTC Ventures is your custom design and development agency focused on building live video applications for web and mobile. So today, I want to talk to you about the most important thing that you can do for your video application. Take a moment and think about that. Uh, what, what is the most important thing that you could build into your video application to make sure that your users are delighted each time that they use it? And I would make the case that anything you can do around call quality, or in particular today we're going to talk about pre-call tests, is the most important thing that you can do to make your video application successful. So why do WebRTC calls fail? There are things that we can try to control, and then there are causes that we have no control over at all. So we can do things like uh, handling different video resolutions or making sure that our signaling process to set up a call is as efficient as possible. We could maybe build in automatic reconnects or make sure that we're making good use of our turn servers so that when it's difficult to establish a connection depending on uh, network firewalls that we're still able to establish that connection as often as possible. So these are examples of things that we can try to control in our WebRTC application to reduce the number of calls that will fail. And then there are a lot of reasons that a video call over the internet might fail that we have no control over at all. We can't control if the users are on a poor internet connection. We can't control if they have a faulty camera or microphone. And we can't control what network restrictions that they may have. So if we can't control those, and if those are our leading causes of why WebRTC calls fail, what can we do about that? Well, one thing we can do is inform our users about it so that at least they're aware of the problems that they're facing, how that may impact their call, so that maybe they can make uh, different choices or we can make different choices to help them. And so the way to do that is with a pre-call test. A pre-call test is something you do before joining a broadcast, before joining a conference call, uh, to basically inform your users about the situation. So here I have a, a screenshot from a telehealth application that we built showing uh, how we uh, put some pre-call checks onto the screen before the user joins their telehealth visit with their medical professional. So let's talk about some of the things that we've built into that. Uh, first, we have a message there for the users. In this case, it's a telehealth application, and I was trying to make a uh, call to a doctor on call. So there's a message, message there just letting me know that, hey, you're not in the call yet with the doctor. We're waiting for the doctor to join this call, right? So having some sort of messaging to them about uh, what they're doing on this screen before they jump into their video call, their broadcast, their conference call, whatever it is, letting them know, hey, we're going to check out some things about um, your connection and help you have a successful visit here. Uh, you may also need, depending on the use case or the flow, in this case we have a ability for the user to cancel that instant call. So if I see something in this pre-call test that tells me, hey, this, this video call is going to be terrible, there's no point in me trying to have it, I can cancel the call. That cancels the request in this application being made to a doctor to join the call. Now, most importantly and most commonly, which you'll see in any pre-call test, is a preview of your own video. So that's great for just making sure that you know, if I have multiple cameras, I'm looking at the right camera to, to talk to uh, the person in this call, uh, but also gives me a sense of the quality of the call that I'm about to have just as a user kind of visually, right? But then there are more detailed things that we can do as well in that pre-call test. So certainly having controls here, we have a little slider button here to turn on or off our microphone. We might we might want as the user to choose whether to turn on or off our camera or microphone uh, going into the call. We also have a drop down for both camera and microphone le letting us choose which device we want to use if we have multiple cameras or microphones uh, connected to our device. On the microphone in particular, we uh, put in a visual indicator. So in this case, there's a little blue bar here that's bouncing. Uh, on that pre-call screen as I talk so that I can see visually that the microphone is working. That's really helpful to have some sort of a volume level indicator visually on the page so that they can tell that not only have they chosen the microphone they want to use, but it is actually working right now. 
You may want to have a backup plan too. So in this example, we have a link here that says switch to a phone call that allows, uh, in this case, the system dials out to the user to their cell phone to bring them in over a, a, a regular cell phone call. Uh, or this might be also where you display dial-in information. So maybe they want to use their video or use their screen sharing, but they would rather dial in for audio through their phone. So giving them that option. And then a connectivity test. In this example, uh, in this screenshot, the connectivity test has been completed. So it's a completed green bar. But when we're looking at that screen, it's moving like a progress bar as we conduct the connectivity test. And the color can also indicate whether that connectivity test was successful or not. So in this case, we have some results underneath that uh, indicating that the network check was successful. What that means in this case is that uh, this application, uh, this pre-call test is built on top of Vonage video. So we're doing an actual network test to make sure that we can reach Vonage's media servers, that there's no restrictions on the network. So we don't have to tell the user all that detail of what we're doing. But we're at least giving them a check mark that, hey, the, the network connectivity test worked, the network check works, which means we know we can contact the media servers that we need to use in this application. The video quality is fair uh, in this example. The audio quality is excellent, right? So we could indicate that with just something uh, visual to the user that tells them whether their video quality is fair or excellent in their network connections right now. Or we could also, you know, behind the scenes, we're measuring what is the actual strength of their connection. We could show them those actual numbers. Maybe we don't need to show that to, to the user. Most people don't know what those numbers exactly would mean. If, as long as we tell them, hey, you have a good enough connection for a fair video call or an excellent video call, whatever the case may be, behind the scenes, we might want to store that more detailed information of what was the actual strength that we measured at their connection as well. So these are some of the different things that you'll want to include in your pre-call test. Once that pre-call test has completed, what actions could you take based on that? There are things that you may just want to recommend to the user, or there might be proactive uh, actions that you take within your application based on the results of that pre-call test. So for example, we might recommend to the user that they turn off their camera and use audio only in this call. If the video quality is going to be very poor, if the connection is low, but they could still have an opportunity for a good audio only call. So we might recommend that to them, or we might force them to enter the call with audio only and video turned off. Maybe we allow them to turn back on video if they really want, um, but we at least get them into the call with their video turned off. It depends on your use case, whether you want to force the user to take that action make the choice for them, or simply make the recommendation of what might be the best experience for them. But anything that we can do to inform them about that, it's really helpful because at least now they know going into the call they might not have a perfect experience. It's not your application's fault. It's because they're on a poor connection. And so that's also going to cut down customer service calls to you as well. Uh, we might also, based on the results of the connectivity test, recommend that they dial in instead of using video or audio at all. Maybe they, they're on a really poor connection and they really need to just dial into this conference call and not try to join it through the internet at all. Uh, if, say, that network check failed and we were unable to reach the media servers that we need for this call to be successful, we might make a recommendation to them on that page that they change what connection they're on. Uh, we don't have to tell them all the details necessarily of why we're saying that, but we might say something like, hey, it looks like you're on a uh, restricted network or a private network that is preventing you from accessing our video servers. Can you switch to something else, right? If they're in an office, for example, uh, maybe they're on a, a guest Wi-Fi at that office that has a lot of restrictions on it. Can they switch to maybe tethering from their cell phone uh, or joining the, the corporate network there? You know, there may be a different connection uh, that they could join that would give them better access to the public internet, to our media servers. So a recommendation like this might prompt them to do that. Uh, if we do detect anything wrong in the browser that they're using, an, an out-of-date version or maybe a browser version that your application doesn't support, we might also recommend here, okay, switch to Chrome, switch to Firefox, whatever. And then depending on uh, if there are negative results, do we allow or deny them access into the call itself? Generally speaking, you're not going to just 
say somebody, hey, your connection looks bad. You're not allowed in this call. Uh, but we might want to at least let them know that, hey, we would really recommend you don't join this call until you can get on a better internet. Uh, or we're going to let you in, but just a warning, your experience in this call may be poor. Not our fault in the application, sort of your fault as a user in the sense of you're, you're on a poor connection, right? So those are recommendations or actions that you might recommend to the user. But remember too, behind the scenes, you've just gathered a lot of really useful information. You might want to log that information in your system, especially if there is uh, a possibility of those users contacting you for customer service. So this could be really, really helpful to you just in having some general statistics of how, how successful is your application, uh, where are people connecting from, what type of connections are they using to get to you, what's the strength, the average strength of uh, connection that your users have. That could just be really useful information to you as the application owner, but it could also be really useful information about this specific call if your users may contact customer service later on and say, hey, I tried to join this conference call. I had a really bad experience. I want my money back, right? And your customer service would be able to look at this and say, hey, uh, sorry, application worked fine. What we show here is that you were on a very poor strength connection. Uh, we weren't able to access your camera, et cetera. You know, here's some recommendations for how to have a be better experience in the future, right? So this is data that can enable your customer service to be able to do maybe more than just apologize for a bad experience, but actually help the user to understand uh, what the issues are on their side that may have caused that problem. So you might want to store the connection speed that you that you tested, the upload, the download speed that you measured. Uh, their IP address, perhaps their connectivity results, the browser they were using, what device they were on, uh, especially any errors or warnings that your code received while trying to connect. For example, you weren't able to um, establish a connection to that media server. Anything like that that you store could be really helpful in a customer service scenario. And then even once they're in the call, you may want to also gather some other statistics this screenshot is from uh, uh, something I discussed in one of our other WebRTC tips. Uh, this is from the Vonage Advanced Insights API. Uh, a number of CPASs out there have APIs like this that will get you some information about what happens during the call, uh, or you can look at other services like call stats to integrate this into your call. And uh, storing some of this information about the call as it happens in real time also could help with those customer service situations afterwards. So how do you implement a pre-call test? Uh, just pro I'm just going to provide a couple quick examples here. If you're using a CPASS, then uh, they probably have something that you can connect to. So this is a little code snippet from Vonage from the OpenTalk and TalkBox video API. Uh, and so you can see that they have a wrapper here that will do things like test the, your video connection, give you some reasons why it didn't work that you could display to the user or that you could interpret and act on or test connectivity to their servers itself. So that's an example of the network test open, uh, offered by OpenTalk, the Vonage video service. Uh, another example here, Twilio has a uh, network quality API that, so if you're using Twilio as your CPASS, you might use something like this to detect the strength of the connection at all. In this little code example uh, from, from their documentation, it's showing how you might uh, uh, print out sort of a, like on a cell phone the, the, the five bars of what is the strength of your connection. So you might do that just to present to the users during the call. This is something that you could use throughout the call. So maybe the call started out with really strong network connectivity, but then it started to drop. And this is a way that you could provide that visual indicator to your users based on an ongoing check throughout the call like this, or you can use this prior to the call as part of your pre-call test uh, as well. And then you could also, um, depending on your use case, you just as an individual, you could go to a site like test.webrtc.org. They have this WebRTC troubleshooter that will be really interesting. This is something you could use just in a customer service scenario. If you're talking to somebody and they're saying, hey, I never connect to your calls, so I don't understand why, customer service agent might send them to this site or a page that you make like this on your site that says, well, let's let's try the system, the, the computer that you're always using for those calls, see what's going on. 
This test checks your microphone, your camera, different resolutions, your network, your connectivity throughput through that. So this is a this uh, takes a little bit of time to run through all these checks when you go through this site, but it's very comprehensive. You could also look at this implementation as an example of how you want to implement parts of that into your own application as well. So that's it. What's the most important thing that you can do to make your video application a success? It's really about informing your users and pre-call tests are a great way to inform your users. So if you would like to build your live video applications, if you'd like to tap into the expertise that our team has in doing things like this to not only build a great video application, but also ensure a good experience for users around that application in a wide variety of use cases, contact us today. You can find us at webrtc.ventures. We look forward to helping you build your live application.